I have low scores on my step 1 and step 2 CK exam, what should I do? I get asked about this question every day from so many students and in my opinion there are different things that you can do to optimize your chances of matching even with low step 1 or step 2 CK scores. In this video I'll go over the general things that you can do to increase your chances of matching and not have a low score compromises your chances of getting into residency. However, I believe that every applicant is different, the route that one applicant can take might totally differ from another applicant that's why if you need one-on-one -on -one session with an advisor who can give you detailed individualized approach on how to match and how to increase your chance of matching go ahead and schedule a consultation on our website but if you want to listen to the general advice that can apply to most applicants go ahead and continue with this video in my opinion the most important factor that can help you match if you have low scores is connections and some people are born with a connection they have a family member who's well-known physician within the field that you're applying to or they have a friend of a friend or a friend of a family member who is a program director or has a say in a residency program and that's good but most applicants do not have that type of connection so you can establish your connections so some people think that if you don't know someone that's it you don't have connections and that's wrong in the US system because you can establish your own connections through so many ways and let's start by talking about research. Research is a phenomenal way to establish connections in the US. And the reason behind that is when you do research, you do it with a mentor, you establish a long-term relationship. When you go and do an elective that we'll talk about next, you do it for usually a month. So you don't establish that type of long-term relationship like the one you do in research. Because most applicants who do research do it for six months, years, sometimes two years. So you would get the chance to uh, build that type of relationship and get that support from your mentor that you would not get otherwise. So doing research is an important way of establishing connections and it also helps you because you get a research experience that so many applicants do not have. So it helps you stand apart from other applicants. I know that so many applicants are reluctant to do research because they don't like it, but sometimes you don't know that you like it until you try it. Most applicants don't do research in their medical school or prior to medical school, that's why I would recommend trying it doing six months a year if you want to learn how to find research positions in the US what are the expectations how to find a mentor how to find institutions criteria that you should look at check out the course that we have on how to find research positions in the US and that should provide you with all the information you need about research positions and if you still have any questions or you need uh, an individualized approach one on one session with someone who can guide you with this process go ahead and schedule that on our website under research advising so the advantages of research are it helps you establish connections within the field second you can get amazing letters of recommendations people can call people for you you get great support and third you get phenomenal experience which is how to do research that you can implement in your residency and afterwards the disadvantages are time so you'd be spending six months a year or sometimes two or three years so that is time from your life money some positions are not paid especially in the beginning you might not be paid until maybe six months or a year and then you start getting paid some people are lucky and get paid from the beginning so money might be a factor and some people as I said they don't like it that's why I'm talking about the general things here and if you want an individualized approach you have to schedule a consultation with one of our advisors to give you an individualized approach for yourself but if you see that research is for you I think it's a great way to cover or like go over the disadvantage that you have if you have a low score the other great way of building connections is through US clinical experience and I have a detailed video on how to find US clinical experience, the different types of US clinical experiences. But if you are a medical student, go ahead and do an elective because in this way, you'd be able to impress people with your uh, skills. If you're good, of course, you have to work hard to, to do that. You can know people, know the residents, and if they like you, they might take you in their program, even if you have low scores. So that's why if you go get to know the people one-on-one, -on -one, these uh, residents, these faculty members, the scores don't matter as much anymore because the scores in most program directors opinion are reflective of an applicant uh, work ethics their intelligence their medical knowledge but if they see personally someone who's really good very hard working uh, they stay late they have a lot of uh, skills surgical skills clinical skills that is more important than the exam that's why doing an elective in a program that you think 
you have a realistic chance of matching in would be very helpful to go over a low step one or step two CK score. For those who graduated, they can do something called externship or observerships. But as I said in my video on how to find your clinical experience, try to do it in a place that they have a residency program so you can impress people who can choose you. If you work in a private clinic with a private doctor, you might get a letter of recommendation, but that might not be enough to go over a low step one or step two CK score. Because in order to do that, you have to be working with the people and you have to convince them personally that you are a good applicant. So if you have a low step one or step two CK score, another way of establishing your connections is doing a clinical rotation in the hospital that you want to match at or you think you have a chance of matching at. If you're a student, you can do an elective. If you're already a graduate, you can do the observerships or externships. And what I said about the rotations, apply for both international medical graduates and U.S. students because U.S. students do the away rotations in the last year of their medical school in the fourth year and their national medical graduates can take the elective in their final year of medical school or observerships after they graduate. So these rotations again are very helpful not only to establish connections but to prove to someone that you're clinically competent and get a letter of recommendation that might also help you in other programs. But as I said, you have to be really good and you have to show up early, leave late, be very nice to everyone, have good medical knowledge. If you're in surgery, read about your cases and we can do a detailed video on how to ace your medical rotation, but you have to be very good. Don't think that just going to an away rotation is enough reason for you to get in the specialty or get into residency program. There is a very long list of things you have to do during the rotation to be able to convince people that you are a good applicant. Another thing that applicant might do to go over a low step one or step two CK score if they graduated is step three. Some people might do step three and try to get a high score to convince program directors that they can pass an exam, they can uh, score well, but that might not be the best strategy or might not be the strategy that works for every program. Some programs might look at step three, some programs don't even look at step three. The step one and step two CK are the only screening criteria. Now step one is gonna be pass fail, so most program will be transitioning to step two CK score screening only. And to give you an idea about the screening, some programs, because they don't have time to look at every single application, what they do is they say, I'm only looking at the applications of those who have uh, over 240 on step two CK. So instead of looking at 4,000 applications, they would look at 1,000 applications. They might raise the bar up and down a little bit every year to screen a certain number of applications. They can say, I only have capacity and faculty to screen a thousand. So they continue raising the bar up until they reach 1,000. So that's why even if you score high on step three, if you don't meet that screening criteria, you might not even be looked at or people might not even look at your step three score. Some programs don't have this screening criteria. They might review every application, but some programs have this screening criteria. And in that case, if they only look at the screening criteria and those who are over the screening criteria, they would be looked at. In that case, step three doesn't help. But if they look at the overall application and they see, okay, this person did not score well on step two, and now they scored well on step three, they, they might consider you. But if they only use screening, that might not be the ideal case. Previously, when step one used to be a scored exam, the students used to try to score higher on the step two CK to compensate a low step one. But now step one is gonna be pass fail. So you have only one shot of getting a high score on your USMLE exams. Other activities that applicants might pursue after a low step one or step two CK score are volunteering or working as a scribe, physician assistant, or other similar activities. And in my opinion, these are not the ideal way to establish your connections because most of these jobs are not done in big academic institutions and you won't have access to people who choose you for a residency program. So yes, it is not a bad idea to add these activities on your CV, but I don't think these activities will be the deal breakers in you matching into residency. That's why I prefer the first two routes, which are building connections through research or building connections through US clinical experience or working with the physicians who will be taking you or making the decision to take you in a residency program rather than working as a scribe or a physician assistant or working in a private company. I've seen these cases mainly with international medical graduates. If you are doing these to get money because you have financial problems, that is totally fine. 
But if you're only doing these to increase your chances of matching, I don't think these are the best route to pursue if you're trying to compensate for a low step one or step two CK score. There are a long list of things that you can do to increase your chances of matching and you can add it to your CV, such as uh, volunteering, going to conferences, meeting people, uh, being part of societies, taking leadership skills, attending courses, but in my opinion, these again are not deal breakers in you matching to residency. They definitely help at your CV, but try to establish connections with someone who is influential in the program that you want to match at or influential in the specialty because that will be the best case to help you match into residence. And if you want to get an individualized approach on what you should do, what is the ideal plan for you because every applicant is different, go ahead and schedule a consultation on our website so we can get you in touch with one of our advisors who can give you a detailed idea of all the plans that you have, what is the ideal case for you because you don't want to pursue one plan, spend a year or two and this turns out not to be the ideal case for you. So if you want to get an individualized approach, go ahead and schedule one on our website. And if you find any value in this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever I post future videos on my YouTube channel. If you have any questions about this video or if there is anything that I missed that can help applicants improve your chances of matching, drop them in the comments below or feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at Malki Asad, my Facebook page Malki Asad MD or reach out to our email info at matchguide.com. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you in future videos. Peace.